having been a CISO uh, a few times now at a few very large organizations, I think one of the critical things that security professionals can do is learn how to communicate to non-security professionals. Um, it's, it's very easy to overwhelm people with te technical talk and technical lingo to people who don't understand it, just like it's easy for finance people to overwhelm non-finance professionals. I think technical people, especially in the security profession, seem to have a tendency to do that. Conversely, I think um, it's important for CEOs and board personnel to understand that security is critical to the viability of an organization. The, the principal challenge for the security leader, uh, whether it's at the CIO level or the CISO level, is really to ensure that the business leaders, the mission leaders, understand the incredibly important role of security. Security has to be a business enabler and their ability to run the enterprise well, to use information in imaginative and expanding ways is totally dependent on the ability of the security team to actually protect all that information. You know, CEOs and board members need to be asking certain kinds of questions. They need to be asking questions about um, do we understand our risk environment? Do we understand the threat environment? Do we understand um, who might be challenging us and where they might be coming from? Um, do we have the proper infrastructure to address those challenges and those threats? So these are the kind of things, the kind of questions that really need to be come from coming from company leadership to the security people within the organization, rather than the or, the the security people in the organization always trying to justify their existence. So the responsibility for actually resourcing the security operation kind of falls back not just to the security team, the CISO, but it really needs to reside with the business leaders. They need to understand that they're on the hook for this just as well. And at the same time, the business leaders need to come and ask the security team kind of what the state of play is. Are we better off than we were yesterday? Are we managing the risks? Do we, have you had good help in identifying what the key risks are? And do you have the resources you need to manage the risks that count most? It's a complex process. It requires everybody to learn new conversational skills, to be perfectly honest. Um, and to open up a new dialogue of, of discussion about how to manage the overall risks to the enterprise. The security team will often see a particular vulnerability or configuration weakness or network weakness over here as being equivalent to the same weakness over here. But in the context of the mission of that agency, this may be much more critical than this particular set of assets or this line of business. And it's essential that the security program have that context of these assets, this mission is more sensitive than this. So when we find equivalent problems, this comes to the fore ahead of this one. Of course, at the State Department, where everyone probably knows the State Department was issuing letter grades on a regular basis to embassies around the world. And what was interesting about the way they did that was they didn't send the letter grades to the IT security teams because they didn't really have the resources to fix the problems that were found. They, they could find the problems, but they weren't hands-on to fix them. They didn't send the grades to the operations teams because they had the resources to fix them, but very often those resources were directed some other way. They sent the letter grade to the ambassador, and the ambassador typically was not somebody used to getting a C. And so the ambassador was in a position to say, how do we shift the resources or shift the direction to make sure that next month we get an A and we're not bringing up, bringing up the rear. So that ability to associate where the risk was in the environment with the business owner of that risk has been very important in generating healthy competition and um, really a, a competitive, collaborative kind of dynamic that's been very effective. The Centers for Medicare Medicaid Services has done something very similar where they scan all of their data centers around the country. Um, they scan them every 48 hours, they issue a monthly letter grade, and they send the letter grade to the business owner within CMS to whom those data, who are supported by those data centers. And again, those business owners don't want to be bringing up the rear, and so they are able to shift the resources, 
do what's necessary to get attention to the security problems so that they get a better grade the following month. And what they found is that there are then benefits to having that better grade because when that data center, for example, needs a waiver for some particular challenge in their environment, if they've consistently gotten an A, it's going to be easier for them to get that waiver because CMS has the visibility into their security program, has a level of confidence that they can handle that accepted risk, whereas somebody who's not been responsive to the program is, is going to have a harder time getting a needed waiver.